Hey y'all, so like the video says, this video is going to be about whether affordable natural hair products work or not. So first I'm going to start off with the demo, so sit tight and let's get right into it. So the products I'm using today are listed as $4.48 at Walmart. It's African Pride's Moisture Miracle Collection and we all know about them from back in the day, the orange and yellow products. But they have some new new that's been getting some good reviews, so I'm going to be using those today. So I'm starting on freshly washed and deep conditioned hair, and I'm going to be using the Coconut and Baobab Leave-In Cream. This cream is very thick, and we all know how coconut goes. It's moisturizing and penetrates the hair shaft. But the benefits of the Baobab is that it's strengthening and protects hair against breakage because it's protein rich. Now, I typically shy away from thicker leave-ins because they tend to just sit on my hair. But as you guys can see, this is absorbing right into my hair. So even though it's thick, it absorbs well, and I'm fine with it. For my salad today, I'm using the Shea and Flaxseed Curling Cream, and I love this consistency. It's very lightweight and milky, and if you know anything about flaxseed, it instantly makes most textures soften up and define as soon as you apply it. It also provides bomb slip, and I mostly see flaxseed and gels. They make for like the most defined wash and goes, but I was excited to see this in a cream form, so I can try it on other styles like rod sets and twist outs, you know? And I'm layering that with the five essential oils out of the collection. This curl cream also is bomb to follow up the leave-in because it has shea in it, which is a sealant. And then with the five essential oils, that also acts as a sealant. So I'm definitely locking in moisture here, which is necessary because it just got cold out of nowhere. And y'all already know what happens to natural hair in the winter. It just absorbs and dries right on up. But yeah, y'all can see it elongated and sleek my hair out, making it easy to ride and keeping it smooth across the ride as I rolled it. The key to a bomb ride set is to ride it tight and use a product that's going to keep your hair smooth. I personally prefer creams and foams for ride sets, but I know some people do it with gels because that's the only thing they know how to use that'll get their hair sleeped out. If you're going to use a gel, just make sure it's a moisturizing gel that won't make your hair hard. You want your rod set to be soft and fluffy, not stiff and crunchy. For a very detailed tutorial on how I get my rod set so sleek and smooth, make sure you guys click the i card that's going to be linked right here. Okay, so this is the next day and I'm gonna take down the rods and y'all my hair was so moisturized Like having that coconut oil in the leave-in and then the shea butter in the styler Definitely did the trick to properly hydrate and seal in the moisture for me So these are super rich, but my hair doesn't feel oily. It's a little heavier than normal But it's not caked down. It feels really good and it doesn't leave a residue So personally for my texture, I will leave out the oil step with that cream because I think it can seal my hair in without it and it'll get a, a little bit lighter and fluffier results. I think that adding that oil to the styling cream will be great for my girls who have high porosity where they moisturize their hair and it just dries right up quick. But for me personally, I'm going to leave it out next time. Oh, and as usual, I sat under the dryer for about an hour and then air dry overnight. You don't have to sit under a dryer. I do this because it takes a long time for my hair to dry. But um, outside of that, these products, I did notice that my hair took a little longer to dry. Like, typically, I use lighter weight products, like I said, so I wasn't really surprised. So when I woke up in the morning, I definitely went ahead and sat under the hooded dryer for an additional 30 minutes before unraveling my hair. And now I'm going to go through and separate my curls. And I did not have to apply any additional oil to separate. My hair was properly moisturized and sealed. And as y'all can see, there's not one curl out of place. So I just didn't apply any additional product. This was good to go. But like I said, next time I use the products, I am going to skip the oil. So I probably will just apply the oil at this point when I go through and separate. Just kind of see what order I want to layer these products when I use them in the future. That's the thing about trying out new products. Sometimes you got to switch the order around or switch the timing around on what step you apply what product just to see what's going to work best for your texture. 
before I forget, I heard y'all on Instagram and Snap when I posted my results for this. I will be trying that pre-poo and that heat-activated mask. Everybody was telling me that is like the creme de la creme of this collection. So I'm definitely going to be trying that on my next wash day. And now I'm going to fluff my hair a little bit. And this is day one hair. But wait a second, don't leave because I'm gonna show y'all how the style lasted me throughout the week. And I'm gonna spill the tea on whether affordable versus expensive natural hair products work or not. All right, y'all, so this is day five hair. And as you can see, I still have good definition and volume. My hair feels really soft still. I haven't had to re-moisturize. But overall, my hair feels great and I still think it looks great. Now, to answer the question as to whether prices matter with hair products, the answer is yes and no. No, because you can get good products for the Lola. Like these products were like $5, like not even, I think they're like $4 and some change at Walmart and I got good results. My hair is still moisturized, I have volume, I have definition. So no cheap product doesn't automatically guarantee that you're about to have cheap looking hair or that the ingredients are gonna be cheap. And on the other hand, expensive products don't guarantee that you're about to have high quality top notch products and top notch looking hair because we've all been there and spent $25 on one jar of something and used it on our hair thinking that we was about to look like hot but we wasn't, we wasn't, it didn't happen. It didn't go down that way. Our hair still looked like it was trash. I've been through that and it's just not the case. So why is there a big disparity in prices amongst products? Basically, some companies just don't have the financial resources to produce their products at a large enough scale to cut back on things. Cause you know, we all know how like buying in bulk is. Like if you ever shopped at like Costco's or Sam's or something, when you buy something in bulk, the price per unit is cheaper. So like if you go to the store and you buy one paper towel roll, you spend a dollar and some change on the one paper towel roll. But if you go to like the Sam's and Costco's, you can get a 20 pack of paper towel rolls for like $13, which is not a dollar per paper towel roll. Same things work with hair products. Some companies have the financial resources to produce products on a large enough scale and maintain the integrity of their products so they can produce a whole lot of products for really cheap. Therefore, they're able to sell their, pro their products at a cheaper cost. All companies, especially small companies and newer companies, don't have the ability to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you gotta get it how you live it. And a lot of us still don't buy the products anyway. I'll buy a $5 product just because I'll buy a $17 product. So no, prices really don't matter. I get a lot of comments under my videos like, I can't afford to spend money on this product. It's too expensive, whatever. If you can't afford it, then get a cheaper product. But I'm definitely gonna make an effort to start posting that you don't need to spend a bunch of money on hair products to have good hair. That is a personal preference. That is a choice. I choose to use a lot of products or a lot of different brands on my hair. I don't like to use a lot of products. I try to keep my wash day down to like five products or less. But I choose to use a bunch of different brands. I don't need to use a bunch of different brands. It is a personal choice. So you do not have to spend a bunch of money on hair products. You can get you some bomb hair products with some bomb hair for the Lolo. It is a personal choice as to whether you want to spend a bunch of money on it or not. Um, as far as, because I know people like automatically assume just because the products are cheap, they have cheap um, ingredients. There are also brands that are charging you $20, $25 for products that have quote unquote bad ingredients. When I went through these products, the only thing that I saw that um, might be quote unquote bad is it does have silicone in it but silicones are not necessarily bad so the reason why people say silicones are bad is because they suffocate your hair well what's happening is silicone this is like all sealant so olive oil can do this to your hair jojoba oil can do this to your hair and i can't think of another sealant oil but sealant oils have the same effect if you're putting sealants on dry hair you're sealing in dryness so with using products with silicone in it, because the, the benefits of silicone is that they give you nice shine, they lock in, they really lock in moisture. So like, especially if you have 
high porosity hair or if you're struggling like your hair dries out quick then silicones are actually not bad to incorporate into your routine because it'll lock in that moisture so that's the benefit of silicones it locks it in the bad side about silicones is that if you don't have a good moisture routine and i forgot to mention if you do not wash your hair properly then silicones could have a bad effect that's something I started preaching to y'all. Uh, wash your hair more often because I went through and was just like basically co-washing and I would shampoo my hair every other month. That's not a good practice. Even though we feel like it is because you're just like, I'm just going to moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. You have to shampoo your hair. So I've been preaching to y'all anyway, shampoo your hair often at minimum once a month. So, like I said, I'm definitely going to make a conscious effort to start doing my demos with cheaper products. Because a lot of the times, I'm talking to y'all about the method and showing y'all how to do something. So, I'm definitely going to start showing y'all methods and routines with products that are more affordable for everybody. So, with that being said, I need you guys to go down to the comment section and let me know what some more routines and demos that you that I haven't done yet. Um, my next video, I'm actually about to film because I've been getting a lot of questions. Did my hair stop growing? And basically, I thought it would pretty much be self-explanatory. My texture has changed. My texture is much tighter like you guys know how my flexi rod sets look like this is the flexi rod set you guys saw me do it you know the video and look at how tight the curls got so basically my texture changed and also i feel like because my hair is growing i don't pick my hair as much but i'm gonna do a whole video on talking about my hair and my texture changing you guys look out for that one so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe like i said before you leave Bye.